ओम अज्ञानति मिरांधस्य ज्ञानान जनशलाकया चक्षुरुन मिलितम येन तस्मै श्री गुरवे नमः श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्टम स्थापितम येन भूतले स्वयं रूप कदामयम ददाति स्वपदांतिकम नम ओम विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण प्रेष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति स्वरूप दामोदर स्वामी नित्य नामिने नम सद्भक्त मणये मणिपुर उद्भवाय च प्रभुपाद लसत्वाणी प्रचार निरतायते नम ओम विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण प्रेष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नित्य नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवास आदि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण इन दी सेवेंथ कैंटो ऑफ दी श्रीमद भागवतम विच डिस्क्राइब्स दिस ब्यूटिफुल पास टाइम ऑफ प्रहलाद महाराज एंड हिरण्य कशिपु there is a very beautiful words that comes up in the initial chapters hiranya kashipu chapi bhagavan indayatama vivikshur atyagachuno praladasya anubhavatah what does this words describe it says hiranya kashipu chapi the uh past time of hiranyakashipu and prahlad maharaj as we know hiranyakashipu was very demoniac by nature and he caused a lot of anxiety a lot of trouble in the life of prahlad maharaj even though he was his own father but this verse beautifully describes that, that hiranyakashipu who was so demoniac and was making the royal road to hell so this is a sarcastic comment that is made he was making his royal way a royal road towards hell but just by the remembrance of his son that is pralhad vivikshur atyagat shuno pralhadasya anubhavatah just by remembering his son that is pralhad maharaj his direction changed there was a complete detour that personality who was all set to go towards hell just by remembering a mahajan just by remembering a pure devotee just by meditating on the pure devotee because throughout the day hiranyakashipu was thinking of prahlad how to cause more trouble to prahlad so just by thinking about prahlad he got so purified that shukadev goswami says that now that hiranyakashipu who was all set to go to hell is now all set to go back home back to god and why because of his remembrance of prahlad just by remembering prahlad maharaj he got so purified that there was a complete transformation that personality who was all set to go towards hell is now ready to go back home back to god and dear devotees this is the benefit of remembering and meditating and speaking about a pure vaishnava even though we are not qualified but just by speaking about them the purity that they have in their heart that gets transferred to our heart and then we can hope and pray to go back home back to god at through their mercy so keeping this theme as the center of our discussion we would want to discuss about a very dear personality a very dear associate of shri chaitanya a very dear associate of shila prabhupad who is that personality well he is none other than his holiness bhakti swarup damodar goswami maharaj a very dear associate and servant of shila prabhupad so as we know in india there is a state by the name manipur and manipur has always been a very vaishnava state the reason for that is in the 1700s to be precise in 1760s there was a king by the name bhagya chandra and this king bhagya chandra came in contact with the followers of shila narottam das thakur 
So Narutam Das Thakur initiated various disciples. So his followers happened to come to Manipur and they preached to this king Bhagyachandra. And when Bhagyachandra became a devotee, he made Vaishnavism a state religion in Manipur. So the whole of Manipur became a Vaishnava state. And even till this date, Manipur remains the only state in India which is a Vaishnava state. Almost 100% of the population in Manipur are all devotees. They're all devotees of Vishnu. And the credit for that goes to the followers of Narutam Das Thakur who preached to this king Bhagyachandra. So in Manipur, in the year of 1937, on the day of Odana Shashti, this day of Odan Shashti is very auspicious because it is the first day of winter. But as far as bhakti is concerned, as far as spirituality is concerned, it has a very beautiful significance with that of Jagannath. In the past times of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we know that there was a very famous personality by the name Pundarik Vidyanidhi. And Pundarik Vidyanidhi was a very flashy person, very advanced but very flashy. He would have silken robes. He would sit on high thrones. He would chew betel nut. There would be people to fan him. So very flashy personality. And anyone who saw him for the first time could get bewildered. So on the day of Odan Shashti, it is a tradition, generally in the temples of Jagannath, that starched clothes that are there. So even in our life we see many times we wear starched clothes but on the day of Odan Shashti for the Supreme Lord Jagannath and Baladev and Subhadra starched clothes are offered it is an offering made to the Supreme Lord so when Pundarik Vidyanidhi saw this he was amazed but at the same time he was very perplexed and he told the Pandas so the Pandas are the Pujaris the priest in Puri, the priests are called as the Pandas. So the Pandas were told by Pundarik Vidyanidhi. He said that, my dear Pandas, you worship this day, that is fine. But why are you offering starched clothes to the Supreme Lord? There is nowhere written that on this day starched clothes has to be offered. So Pundarik Vidyanidhi was very heavy on this point And he was condemning what the Pandas were doing. So the Pandas folded their hands and they accepted the proposal that Pundarik Vidyanidhi made. But during that time, when this occurred, Swarup Damodar Goswami, who was the dear associate of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, was also present. When Swarup Damodar Goswami heard this, he immediately went to Pundarik Vidyanidhi and said, My dear Pundarik Vidyanidhi, why are you correcting the Pandas? They are very dear to Jagannath. Just like the Brajavasis are very dear to Brajendranand and Krishna, to Brindavan Krishna, similarly the Pandas are very dear to Jagannath. So my dear Pundarik Vidyanidhi, why are you correcting them? Whatever they are doing is right. And this is bona fide. This is authentic. On this day, starch clothes are offered to the Lord. So Swarup Damodar was very strong in this point that the starch clothes have to be offered to the Supreme Lord. So that night, when Pundarik Vidyani went to sleep, the Supreme Lord as Jagannath came in the dream of Pundarik Vidyanidhi and slapped him. <laughs> the Supreme Lord slapped Pundarik Vidyanidhi and said, My dear Pundarik, who has given you the right? What audacity do you have to correct my pandas, my priest? Whatever they're doing is right. And Swarup Damodar also corrected you. Please listen to Swarup Damodar. He is right. The pandas are right. I like to wear starched clothes. So when Pundarik Vidyanidhi got up, he was repenting because he had corrected the pandas who were very dear to the Lord. And he went and apologized to the pandas. So we find that this day of Odan Shashti is very dear to Jagannath, but it is also very dear to Swarup Damodar Goswami because it has a very strong connection of Swarup Damodar Goswami. He had corrected Pundarik Vidyanidhi and the Supreme Lord had confirmed the verdict of Swarup Damodar Goswami. So in the year of 1937, 
on the day of Odin Shashti, a very young, effulgent, cute boy was born. His parents were Sri Yogendra Singh and the mother was Sri Kanyabai Devi. And because Manipur is a Vaishnava state, the parents were devotees. The father was an expert singer to such an extent that he filled the ears of this young child with devotional songs, with Vaishnava bhajans, with the songs of Sripad Narottam Das Thakur right from the very beginning. And because they were so devoted to the Supreme Lord, they named the child as Damodar. The complete name of the child was Todam Damodar Singh, or fondly remembered as Dr. T.D. Singh. And because generally we find that the parents give a particular name, but when they have to address their own child, they have a short form. They have something called as a nickname. So even Damodar, which was his actual name, was addressed by his parents and the locals as Damu. So Damodar became Damu and with love and affection, everyone around the province, they would address Damodar as dear Damu. So when Damu was growing up, what happened was by the time he was eight, it was the time of the World War. And the, as we know, the World War ended in 1945. But before the World War ended, the Japanese were bombing Imphal. They were bombing Manipur. And because of this, the father, Yogendra Singh, along with his family, they had to shift locations. They had to shift locations and they had to live near a river bank. But sadly, it so happened by the will of Providence, by the time little Damu was just eight years old, he lost his father. And he was just left with his mother and sister, but completely in poverty because the father was the breadwinner of the family. And now without the father, Damu was young and they were left in utter poverty. And soon, he got separated even from his mother. He got separated even from his sister. But before he got separated from his sister, little Damu, because he was very young, he told his sister that, my dear sister, one day, I will completely cover you with gold. I will give you so much gold that your whole body will be covered with gold. So when his sister heard this, she said, no, dear Damu, you are saying now that you are going to cover me with gold, but in due course, when you grow, when you are in your youth, when you are in your 20s, you will get married and you will not cover me with gold, but in fact, you will cover your wife with gold. When young Damu heard this, he said, wife? No way. I am not going to get married. I am going to remain a brahmachari. I am going to remain a naishtika brahmachari. I will never get married. So when he said this, no one took him seriously because he was very young. But as time unfolded, when he was about 12 years old, his mother also got separated and his sister got married. So now all in all, at the age of eight, he has lost his father. And by the time he's 12, he's separated from his mother. He's also separated from his sister. So at the age of 12, little Damu is left with no one. No parents, no brothers, no sisters, absolutely no one. To such an extent that because of financial problems, he had to even leave his education. Now the question ar arises, how did he maintain himself? Well, he was tilling the land that his father had left for him. At the age of 12, little Damu was tilling the land because if he didn't till the land, he would not get anything to eat. And if he didn't get anything to eat, how will he survive? So he prioritized his hunger over his education, even though he was a very bright young kid. Because of financial issues, he kept his education to the side. And every day, in the heat, in the scorching sun of India, he was tilling the land when he was just 12 years old. So my dear devotees, this is a wake-up call. 
that even in the life of devotees in the even in the life of pure devotees there is always struggle it is never a bed of roses there is always going to be thorns and this is the best example by the age of 12 he is separated from his parents and is struggling to maintain himself he is struggling to maintain his own life and it doesn't end here by the time he was 14 which means the year of 1951 when little damu was just 14 years old he fell seriously ill and it was typhoid he was detected with typhoid now dear devotees this is 70 years from now 1950s in 2020 we have medicines for typhoid and malaria and all the other diseases maybe except corona but for other diseases we do have medicines but in 1950s there were no medicines for any typhoid so when he was ill and he was admitted in the hospital the doctors tried everything but little damu was not recovering and interestingly, this is the same thing that happened in the life of Srila Prabhupada. As we have read in the Lilamrit by His Holiness Satswarup Goswami Maharaj, when Prabhupada was small, Prabhupada also fell ill because of typhoid. And as we know, the pastime unfolds. The doctor suggested the medicine as chicken soup. But because Prabhupada, was from a Vaishnava family, his father Gaur Mohande declined. He said, I will never give chicken soup to my son. I will pray to the Supreme Lord. The Supreme Lord will take care, but I will never give chicken soup to my young son. And Prabhupada never had the soup. And by the prayers of the devotees, by the blessings and mercy of the Supreme Lord, Prabhupada recovered. And this is exactly the same thing happened, dear devotees. When Damu was just 14, he fell ill with typhoid with no medicines around. And at that time, devotees began to pray to the Supreme Lord. Because it was a Vaishnava state, all of them unanimously had firm faith in Vishnu. They had firm faith that Krishna will maintain. Krishna has rescued all his devotees in the past. And Krishna, even now, will rescue our dear Damu. We see in the Vastra Haran pastime, when Draupadi was amidst the assembly, there was no one to save her. Even the Pandavas couldn't do anything. But at that time, it was Krishna who helped. Krishna became a Sari. And there was a Govinda Sari Bhandar that came on and on and on. Agre Kurunam Atha Pandavanam Dushasanenatritavastrakesham when in the assembly, when the Vastar Haran was taking place, no one came to the rescue, but it was Krishna who came. The prayers of Draupadi were answered by the Supreme Lord, and he helped Draupadi from embarrassment. Even in this case, when Damu was ill, it was the prayers that rescued him. And which prayer in particular? Well, it was the Dasha Avatar Stotra. Chala Yasi Vikramane Bali Mad Bhutavamana Padana Khani Rajanita Jana Pavana Keshavadrita Vamana Rupa Jai Jagadisha Hare Jai Jagadisha Hare Jai Jagadisha Hare it was the Dasha Avatar Stotra that was chanted as a shield for little Damu. And believe me or not, devotees, for 40 days, this little child did not have anything, but was just surviving on water and the prayers of the devotees. And miraculously, 
even the doctors were surprised miraculously by the prayers of the pure Vaishnavas, by the chanting of the Dashavata Stotra, the Supreme Lord protected him. Little Damur was rescued after 40 days of typhoid. So this is a very important instruction that prayers can transform lives. They can protect lives. And Maharaj through this is showing the world he is ready to take the suffering upon himself but is wanting to show to the world that prayers can change lives. Prayers, if they are chanted regularly, the Supreme Lord hears those prayers and protects his devotees. And he would make a very significant point. I still remember, he would, Maharaj would say that the Dasha Avatar Stotra is so powerful that it should be chanted every day. Especially it should be chanted during the evening time. When the sun is about to set, that is the time the Dasha Avatar Stotra should be chanted. And what is the significance? What is the benefit? What will we get by chanting the Dasha Avatar Stotra? Well, he would say that anyone who regularly chants the Dasha Avatar Stotra, prosperity and auspiciousness in his life is guaranteed. This is a Shastrik Praman, which he would say, and he would encourage his disciples and followers to everyday chant the Dasha Avatar Stotra, especially in the evening, because it brings in a lot of auspiciousness and a lot of prosperity in the family. So this Dasha Avatar Stotra was used for his recovery. In another instance, there was a local festival that was going on and it was depicting the dance of divinity or the Rasalila pastime of Radha and Krishna. And little Damu, he was very small and he was very absorbed in those pastimes. And what happened is mesmerizing. What happened is so amazing. In the 10th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, we find when the pastime of Aghasur is done, when Krishna has killed Aghasur, Parikshit Maharaj, he asks a question to Shukadev Goswami. He says, my dear Shukadev Goswami, Aghasur was killed, but why is it that the children for one year were not to be seen? What is this pastime when Krishna took the form of all his friends? Krishna took the form of all the cows and calves. What was this pastime, my dear Shukadev Goswami? So at that time, Suta Goswami, he narrates, he says, Itam sa prishtha satubadaraidi tatsmarta nantharta khilendriya krichrat punar labda bahir drishosanei pratyahatam bhagavata uttama uttama. When this question was asked by Parikshit Maharaj to Shukade Goswami as to where the children for, were for one full year and why did Krishna take the form of cows and calves? At that time, Suta Goswami says that Shukade Goswami became so ecstatic that he began to remember the pastime of Brahma Vimohan Leela. He began to remember as to how Brahmaji tried to trick Krishna and how he kidnapped the pastimes. But Krishna assumed the form of the cows and calves. And for one whole year, he bewildered Brahmaji. So Shukade Goswami was remembering this pastime. And he became so absorbed that he lost consciousness around. He completely forgot what is going around. And this was a great anxiety for Parikshit Maharaj because he had only two days more to live. If his dear Gurudev, Shukadev Goswami goes into trance, then who will tell the remaining pastimes of the Bhagavatam? Who will explain the Saman Bonam, the Saman substance of devotional life? So Shukadev Goswami went into trance. And it is said, Krichrat Punar Labda Bahir Drishoshanai. Krichrat means difficulty. With great difficulty, Shukadev Goswami was brought back to senses. What was this difficulty? Shripa Chanatan Goswami in his commentary, he writes, for the very first time during the Bhagavad Kata, during the seven days of Bhagavad Kata, for the very first time when Shukadev Goswami went into trance, all the people who were there in the assembly in the form of Narad Muni, Vyasadev, Parashara Muni and various exalted sages, they all took the mridangas, they all took the kartals, they all took the kettle drums, 
all the instruments that they had, they took everything and loudly began to chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. They loudly began to do Kirtan only so that if this pure transcendental sound vibration enters into the ears of Shukadev Goswami, then he can come out of his trance and narrate the future pastimes. So the point to be noted here is the pastimes were so absorbing for Shukadev Goswami that he completely lost connection with the world. He completely forgot that here was Parikshit who was going to die in another two days time. So when little Damu was small, there was a dance troupe that came and they were enacting the dance of divinity, the Rasalila pastime of Radha and Krishna. And young Damu, when he was seeing this pastime, he got so absorbed like Shukadev Goswami, that he lost connection with the world. He became so absorbed that it is said that next day, he even missed his mathematics examination. <laughs> the next day, he had his maths exam. And he was so absorbed in the pastime of Radha and Krishna that he missed his maths examination next day. This does not give us any liberty that we follow in the footsteps of missing our examination. But this only shows to the world that the pastimes are so absorbing that he completely, like Shukadev Goswami, forgot what was happening around. He lost connection with the world. And all this just at the age of 15, years before he met Prabhupada. So as we discussed earlier, that he had lost his parents and sister and everyone had separated. So his education had come to a standstill. And he was just tilling the land. So in the local village, there was a very generous person by the name Shri Kirani Singh. And he decided to help Damodar in his studies. He decided to help Damu progress further in his education because he understood that he's a very bright young kid. And if he's given the right channel, if he's given the right facilities, then he can bless the world with, with his knowledge. So he decided to fund for Damu's education. And as promised, he helped in his education. And in the year of 1961, when Damodar was 24 years old, he finished his bachelor's. He finished his B.Tech from Gohati University. So he was 24 when he finished his bachelor's. Now generally we see 21 is the general age when most individuals finish their bachelor's. But there was a three-year gap owing to the separation from his parents and financial problems. So at the age of 24, our dear Damu finished his bachelor's. And three years later, that is 1964, at the age of 27, he finished his M.Tech from Calcutta University. And the hunger for education didn't stop. He was so bright in his education that he got a scholarship from America. Now, dear devotees, this was something that was never heard of because Manipur is a very small state. So there was no question, no one in the history ever had got a scholarship from a small state such as Manipur to study in America. And this was about 60 years from now. So this was something that was unheard of. But in 1965, 1966, when Prabhupada was in America by the will of the Supreme Lord, even young Damu got a scholarship for America. And in 1969, he finished his second master's. This is so inspiring, dear devotees. He already has a bachelor's and a master's. And now in 1969, he has a double master's from Buffalo, New York. But his hunger for education doesn't stop. He's so interested in education that he enrolls himself in a PhD program. And that too in one of the most prestigious universities around the world. Even till date, this university is ranked in top 10. The University of California, Irvine. Even now, as far as the PhD and the master's program are concerned, it is a university that is ranked very high. And in the 1970s, our young Damodar had got a scholarship to study in their reputed elite institution.
So he enrolled himself for a PhD program, physical organic chemistry. So this was in the year of 1969. And when he enrolled himself, he found a friend in himself by the name Dr. Rao. Generally, it is seen that, um, at least in my life, I have I've personally seen that when we come for masters from India to America, we make friends or we look for friends who are Indians because it is very easy to connect with them. So similarly, our young Damodar, he decided to have friendship with this very scholarly person by the name Dr. Rao. And Dr. Rao was also in the same university pursuing the same field, that is physical organic chemistry. So they became the best of friends and they would spend time together. They would talk about research. They would spoke up, speak about the chemicals. They would speak about the molecules. So day in and day out, they were so close that they would spend time discussing about their research. So once it so happened that the Laguna Beach that is there was very close from their university. And those who have been to Laguna Beach will know that it is a place that is known for its scenic beauty. People from around the world, devotees, non-devotees, everyone come to the Laguna Beach to click photographs and to have a good time because it is known for its scenic beauty. So Damodar, along with his friend, Dr. Rao, they decided to go on evening walks. And every day they would go on evening walks on the Laguna Beach and they would discuss various topics. So once it so happened that when they were walking in the Laguna Beach, they met a few devotees. And this was the first interaction, first encounter with the Hare Krishna devotees in the year of 1970. So when they met the devotees, Damodar recalls, he says that it was a very unusual sight because he had never seen anyone with a dhoti and kurta and a shaved head. And that too in America and that too in Laguna Beach. So it was a complete culture shock for him. For both of them, for Dr. Rao and for our dear Damodar. It was a complete culture shock. And the devotees were completely absorbed in Kirtan and chanting and dancing and distributing books. So from a distance, Damodar and Dr. Rao, they were looking at the devotees. And Dr. Rao suggested to Damodar, that my dear Damodar, why don't we follow these devotees? And let's see what they're up to. Let's see what their philosophy is. So they both agreed and they were following the devotees, but from a distance because they didn't want to get into the moment quickly, but they wanted to understand what the philosophy is all about. So from a distance, they were following the devotees and eventually they landed up in the local Hare Krishna temple. They landed up in the Los Angeles temple. And when they both came to the Los Angeles temple and saw the deities, the beautiful deities of Radha and Krishna, they were completely mesmerized. They were completely flamoxed seeing the beauty of Radha and Krishna. And when they met the devotees and when they were returning, our dear Damodar brought a small book. He purchased a small book, which was Krishna, the reservoir of all pleasure. And during those days, it was just 25 cents. So he purchased this book and took it with him. And soon later, it so happened that Dr. Rao became very much absorbed. He, he had a perfect connection with this philosophy. And he was very much eager. And after a few visits, a few interactions with the devotees, he decided to join this movement. So once it so happened that Prabhupada came to the Los Angeles temple and the Dr. Rao who was there, he gave an ultimatum to Damodar that my dear Damodar, the founder of the Hare Krishna movement is here, Swami Prabhupada. He has come to Los Angeles and I request you, please come with me to meet him. So initially, Damodar would disagree. He would say, no, I have met many Swamis like this. There are many bogus sadhus. I do not want to meet anyone. This is exactly what happened to even Prabhupada. Prabhupada initially was a little reluctant to meet Saraswati Thakur. But then when he met Saraswati Thakur, it was transforming. It was life changing. So exactly here in the life of Damodar, he 
his friend dr rao invited him to come to the temple but he said no i don't want to come um, i have seen many sadhus like this in the past but then dr rao gave him gave him an ultimatum he said tomorrow morning i am going to meet prabhupad and if you are not going to come with me damodar that's the end of our friendship so he kept friendship at stake and he said if you are not come coming to meet prabhupad tomorrow morning this is the last time we are talking so now damodar was in an anxiety because he didn't want to lose a good friend uh, dr rao so he decided that it is time to go and meet prabhupad so on the request of dr rao both of them they went to the los angeles temple and met prabhupad and in the first meeting damodar was so inspired to meet prabhupad and prabhupad was so happy to meet damodar because he was seeing a person who was so well qualified who had a double masters who was pursuing his phd program and was also from a vaishnava state manipur prabhupad was very happy and so was damodar so in the first interaction there was a perfect connection between a disciple and a guru so in the year of 1970 dr rao got initiated by prabhupad and prabhupad gave him the name rai ramananda who is a very dear associate of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu and in 1971 on the 30th of june 1971 in the los angeles hari krishna temple prabhupad initiated our damodar he initiated our damu into the brahma madhva gaudiya sampradaya and gave him the name swarup damodar swarup damodar brahmachari ki jai so he was given the name swarup damodar and in one of the letters prabhupad once wrote he said swarup damodar is so good in his dealings that no one speaks against him he has no enemies everyone loves swarup damodar rupa goswami in his 26 qualities of a vaishnav one of the quality he gives is mitrata or maitra which means friendship a pure devotee is a friend to all he never makes any enemies and this was a confirmation this was an affirmation prabhupada had stamped it he said that swarup damodar is so good in his dealings that he has no enemies this was even confirmed by shila gorgovinda maharaj gorgovinda maharaj once said that if you open the heart of swarup damodar you cannot even find one speck of dust so all the great sadhus of the past in the form of prabhupada and gorgovinda maharaj had heaps of praises for swarup damodar's dealings for his pure heart so after he was initiated and when he was doing his phd prabhupada as we know would have the regular morning walks and in the venice beach which is there in los angeles prabhupada would have his morning walk and our swarup damodar because he was doing his phd he was living far from the temple and whenever prabhupada would come he would drive all the way to the venice beach to just be with prabhupada for the 6 am morning walk he would drive all the way 2 hours just to be with his dear gurudev this is sincerity my dear devotees there is so much hunger there was so much eagerness and spiritual greed and hunger in the heart of swarup damodar brahmachari to be with the spiritual master shila prabhupada and just to take his association so he came all the way and he would be there in the morning walks and prabhupad when he met swarup damodar brahmachari when he saw him in the morning walks he was so happy and one prabhupad disciple recalls by the name asura kula nashana prabhu he says that till the time swarup damodar joined or at least before swarup damodar joined the topic of discussion in the morning walks prabhupad would just say government rascal government fool government rascal government fool but when swarup damodar brahmachari came the discussions completely changed prabhupad began to say scientist rascal scientist fool scientist rascal scientist fool and prabhupad would spend so much time with swarup damodar brahmachari because he knew that whatever time he spent with swarup damodar would never be wasted so during those days the devotees the disciples of prabhupad they would sign up as to who would accompany prabhupad for the morning walks 
So up until Swarup Damodar came, everyone would sign up because everyone would be eager to join Prabhupada. This was the uh, rule that was there in America. But for India, the disciples could join Prabhupada with the morning walks. But in America, there was a system where disciples had to sign up the previous day as to who would join Prabhupada. But once Swarup Damodar joined, the number of signs, the number of people wanting to join the morning walks decreased. Why? Because Prabhupada spent so much time with Swarup Damodar that they would just discuss signs. They would only discuss molecules and chemicals and DNAs and RNAs that no one in the assembly would understand. So they would all back out and they would say that after the discussion is done, please come to us and explain in our language what they're talking because we don't understand the science and chemicals and molecules that they're discussing. So slowly people reduced and we have this famous picture of Swarup Damodar Brahmachari with Prabhupada where he's holding the mic to Prabhupada and Prabhupada is speaking. That was the famous Venice Beach morning walks with Swarup Damodar Brahmachari. So in one such occasion, it so happened that when he was pursuing his PhD, there was a five-day seminar that was organized in the University of California, Irvine. And in those five days, different scientists, different researchers came and they were presenting their philosophy. And one day, it was the turn or it was the chance of a scientist by the name Dr. Stanley Miller. Now, Stanley Miller was very famous for his research. And the theme of this seminar was life and its origin. So basically all the scientists were backing what Darwin said. They were all backing the Darwinism theory. So when Dr. Stanley Miller came to present, Swarup Damodar Brahmachari was there in the audience. This was in the year of 1973, one year before completion of his PhD program. So when Stanley Miller was speaking and he gave a talk, at the end of the talk, Swarup Damodar Brahmachari raised his hand. Because throughout the talk, Stanley Miller, what he said was, this life is made by the chemicals. It is made out of molecules and RNAs and DNAs. So this was his point. And he was backing Darwinism. He was backing the Darwin theory. So when Swarup Damodar heard that Stanley Miller is uh, emphasizing on the point that life is made just out of chemicals, he put his hand up and he told Dr. Stanley Miller, I have a question for you. So Stanley Miller said, yes, what is the question? He said, if I were to give you all the chemicals and molecules and all the elements, the hydrogen and oxygen and amino acids that you're looking out for, if I were to give you everything, can you create life in a test tube? Now, this was a very strong point that was made in front of thousands of people. He said, if I have to give you all the chemicals, can you create life in a test tube? And to that, Dr. Stanley Miller said, that I don't know. He did not have any answer in front of so many people. He was ashamed by this question of Swarup Damodar. He said, I don't know. So the next day in the morning walk, Swarup Damodar was with Prabhupada. And Swarup Damodar narrated this instance. He told to Prabhupada that Prabhupada, Yesterday, Stanley Miller came and he was speaking about life and its origin as to how chemicals and molecules are the reason for the existence of life. And when Prabhupada heard this, the first question that Prabhupada asked Swarup Dhammadar is, didn't you protest? Didn't you say anything? So Swarup Dhammadar said, Prabhupada, I did protest. And this is what I told him. I asked him this question that if I were to give you all the chemicals, can you produce life in a test tube? And for that, he said, I don't know. And when Prabhupada heard this, Prabhupada started laughing like anything. And he said, this is the flaw of the scientist. That is why he says scientists are fools. And Prabhupada was very uh, strong. He was pounding. And he was very happy with Swarup Damodar's question because he was refuting the scientists. He was breaking the teeth of the scientists. So whenever the guests would come to meet Prabhupada, Prabhupada would keep everything to the side and would narrate to them this instance. He would say that my disciple Swarup Damodar, he challenged Dr. Stanley Miller. He challenged Stanley Miller based on the principles of the Shastra and for which Stanley Miller did not have any answer. 
so Prabhupada would be so happy and he would narrate this so many instances and in so many classes we find Prabhupada would address Swarup Damodar as my dear Swarup Damodar our scientist disciple Swarup Damodar where is my Swarup Damodar in so many lectures we hear so Swarup Damodar Brahmachari was very 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 dear and affectionate to Srila Prabhupada and in 1974 dear devotees on the auspicious Vyas Puja of His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada in Los Angeles Temple when Prabhupada was present. Swarup Damodar Brahmachari for the first time he wrote a book in the presence of Prabhupada. Becoming the only disciple of Prabhupada to write a book in the presence of Prabhupada and when Prabhupada saw this book he was so happy. What was this book? Well this book was the scientific basis of Krishna consciousness where Swarup Damodar Brahmachari used science, used all the knowledge that was given to him by Prabhupada in the 1973 Venice talks. He brought all of them together and wrote a book as to how this Krishna consciousness movement is completely scientific. So when Prabhupada saw this, he was so happy and he immediately ordered the Bhaktivedanta Book Trust BBT to publish multiple copies. Just like we have the Chaitanya Charitam and the Bhagavatam being published, similarly Prabhupada gave an instruction to BBT that this book should be published in thousands and millions. And rightly so, during the time of Prabhupada, 100,000 copies were published and were distributed far and wide. And Prabhupada was so happy and till this date, this book is used as a manual in college <laughs> preaching. It is used as a manual in university preaching and devotees around the world are taking help of this book when they have to preach to the scientific community. So Prabhupada was very happy with this work of Swarup Damodar Brahmachari. He would always tell his guests that this book is written by my disciple. He has proved to this world that Krishna consciousness is a very scientific process with the help of his PhD knowledge, with the help of Shastra. And Prabhupada would so many times to his guest, he would narrate this instance. In 1975, when Swarup Damodar Brahmachari was once in Krishna Balaram Mandir, and he was sitting in one corner, and there was a devotee who had heard about his glories. He had heard about how scientific he was and how he would preach to the scientist. He had heard about how Swarup Damodar Brahmachari had defeated Dr. Stanley Miller who was so famous in the world. So this disciple of Prabhupada had heard and this was the first time he was meeting Swarup Damodar face to face. So he went up to Swarup Damodar and he wanted to witness the scientific aspect of Swarup Damodar Brahmachari. So he went up to him and he asked him a question that can you prove the existence of soul in a scientific way? Can you prove the existence of soul or the super soul in a very scientific way? This was a scientific question asked to Swarup Damodar Brahmachari and when Swarup Damodar Brahmachari heard this, he looked at this devotee and said, this is not meant for you. This is meant for the atheist. This is meant for the scientific community. You are already a devotee. You are already a disciple of Prabhupada. You do not require this. And when this devotee heard the very humble reply of Swarup Damodar Brahmachari, his heart melted because this was the first interaction that he had with Swarup Damodar. And this devotee was none other than His Holiness Sachinandan Swami. Sachinandan Swami was the first uh, person who met Swarup Damodar Brahmachari in Krishna Balram Mandir. And this was an instant that was exchanged. And Maharaj recalls in his memories as to how humble. Swarup Damodar Brahmachari was, in spite of his PhD and the double masters, he was still very humble and very genuine and very straightforward in his dealings. So fast forward 1977, it was a summer of 1977 and Prabhupada was in Vrindavan. And Swarup Damodar Brahmachari was also in Vrindavan. And Prabhupada wanted to have a conference because Swarup Damodar was so qualified he wanted to preach Krishna consciousness to the scientific community through the medium of 
conferences. So he gave an instruction. He told Swarup Damodar Brahmachari that, my dear Swarup Damodar Brahmachari, I think it's the right time that we have a conference so that we can preach to the scientific community. So Swarup Damodar, Prabhupada, and another person by the name Dr. Sharma were there in the room of Prabhupada. And they were discussing about this conference. And when the topic came about discussing the name as to what the name of this conference should be, at that time, Swarup Damodar Brahmachari, he recalls, he says that in America, as we know, there is a very famous conference by the name Gordon Conference. Now, this Gordon Conference is famous around the world because of its various conferences that it keeps throughout the year. Throughout the year, there are more than 200 conferences that this uh, Gordon Conference organizes. And it is, the name is given on a person by the name Neil Gordon. So he was the person who started this conference and as a tribute to him, there are multiple conferences that take place. So Swarup Damodar Brahmachari, he was reminded of this and he told Prabhupada, just like we have the Gordon Conference Prabhupada in America, we can keep this conference as the Bhakti Vedanta Conference and the theme can be life and its origin. So when Prabhupada heard this, Prabhupada thought for a while and he said, when we deal with the scientist, it has to be something that they can relate with. And Prabhupada said, instead of keeping the name as Bhakti Vedanta Conference, we can keep it as the first international conference on the topic, life comes from life. He said, this can be the theme. We can keep the theme as life comes from life so that the scientists are eager to come and they don't feel that this is a very spiritual organization or a spiritual gathering. And dear devotees, when Srila Prabhupada left this world in 1977 and it was time to recall all the memories of Srila Prabhupada, all the disciples of Prabhupada came together and in 1973 morning walks that Prabhupada had with Swarup Damodar Brahmachari that was all compiled in a book. And when it was compiled in a book, the question was what should the name be given? And finally, they decided that because Prabhupada selected the name Life Comes From Life for the first international conference in Vrindavan, that is the name that should be given even for the book. So that is how the book that we have, Life Comes From Life, this topic was selected by Prabhupada for the first international conference of Swarupta Madhar Brahmachari in Vrindavan. So in this way, the conference was decided. And the dates that were selected were October 14th, 15th, 16th of 1977, which, were, which happened to be a Friday, Saturday, and a Sunday. So the weekend of October 1977 was chosen as the day when the conference would be held. And at that time, Srila Prabhupada, he told Swarup Damodar Brahmachari, he said, my dear Swarup Damodar, do something before I leave do something before I depart. I want to see something. Please organize a conference. Do something before I depart. I want to see something. So this was an instruction that Prabhupada gave Swarup Damodar Brahmachari. So for the organizing of the conference, after this instruction was given by Prabhupada, Swarup Damodar Brahmachari decided to go to America, to Boston, because there were three booklets that need to be published for the conference so that the attendees who come, they would get a souvenir as the booklet. So for the publication of that booklet, Swarup Damodar Brahmachari took a flight and he went to Boston. And now dear devotees, please hear this very carefully. When Swarup Damodar Brahmachari went to Boston, he gets a letter, he gets a telegram that Srila Prabhupada has now decided to come to the Western world. This was summer of 1977. Prabhupada had decided to come to England, that is the Bhaktivedanta Manor, and then Prabhupada also wanted to go to the Gita Nagari farm here in America. So that was the plan that Prabhupada had chopped. And he told Tamal Krishna Maharaj that I want to go to England and I want to go to America and then I want to come back to India. So Tamal Krishna Maharaj wrote a letter a telegram. He sent a telegram to Swarup Damodar Brahmachari that, my dear Swarup Damodar, we have to cancel the conference because Prabhupada is coming. 
to the Western world. So if Prabhupada is there in the Western world, I think it is wise that we cancel the conference. So when Swarup Damodar Brahmacharya got to know, he was perplexed. He was put in anxiety because Prabhupada's instruction was there should be a conference. But now Prabhupada has decided to come to America. So Swarup Damodar was very perplexed. And at that time, he wrote a letter back to Prabhupada. And he said, Prabhupada, it is my humble request. Please do not come to England. Please do not come to America. Because your health is not very well. This was the summer of 1977. So Prabhupada was very weak. So he wrote a letter to Prabhupada that, Prabhupada, please do not come here. But even before the letter could reach, uh, Prabhupada had already taken the flight and the news that Swarup Damodar Brahmachari got was Prabhupada has already reached Bhaktivedanta Manor. So Prabhupada was very firm in his decisions. And Prabhupada, in, in the weak health, he reached Bhaktivedanta Manor. And when he reached Bhaktivedanta Manor, Swarup Damodar Brahmachari got to know. And he decided to fly from Boston to Manor just to meet Prabhupada. So when he came to Bhaktivedanta Manor, at that time, when he was about to fly from Boston, the devotees in Boston, they made a garland and gave it to Swarup Damodar. And he said, my dear Swarup Damodar, you are going to meet our dear Prabhupada. Please offer this garland on our behalf to Srila Prabhupada. So as we know, in the 11th canto, Uddhav, he says a be very beautiful thing. He says, Thvaya upabhokta shragganda vasa lankara charchita. He says, my dear Lord, whatever you have accepted in the form of remnants or garlands or ornaments, when any person wears these paraphernalia that has been adorned by you, then he becomes completely victorious. Jaye mehi. He becomes completely victorious when we take anything that belongs to Sri Krishna. So this garland that was worn by the local uh, temple deities, Radha Gopijana Vallabha, the devotees took that garland and gave it to Swarup Damodar and told him, my dear Swarup Damodar, please go to Bhaktivedanta Manor and give this on our behalf. So Swarup Damodar Brahmachari took the garland and he flew all the way from Boston to England with the garland and he met Prabhupada at the Bhaktivedanta Manor. And he went, when he met Prabhupada, he garlanded Prabhupada and Prabhupada had tears in his eyes. Prabhupada had tears in his eyes and said, My dear Swarup Damodar, I am not against the scientist. I do not have any problem against the scientist. But the only problem I have is the misrepresentation of knowledge. At the end of the day, even the scientists are part and parcel of Krishna. But when they misrepresent knowledge, that is something that we should refute. So this, Prabhupada was training Swarup Damodar Brahmachari to refute the misrepresentation of knowledge of the scientist and not the scientist as a person. So he had tears in his eyes and he said, I am not against the scientist, but I am against the misrepresentation of the knowledge that they do. And the next day morning, Prabhupada, he called Swarup Damodar and what Prabhupada spoke was heartbreaking. Prabhupada called Swarup Damodar Brahmachari at the Bhaktivedanta Manor and he said, Swarup Damodar, Amar Jeevan Sheshayache, which translates to English as my life is coming to an end. This was the very first time, dear devotees, Prabhupada spoke about his departure. Well, everyone knew that Prabhupada is weak, but Prabhupada had never vocalized it. But for the first time, Prabhupada spoke and he spoke it to Swarup Damodar Brahmachari and said, Amar Jeevan Shesha Yache, my life is coming to an end, Swarup Damodar. And when Swarup Damodar heard this, it is interesting to note that even though he came from a Manipuri background, he still understood Bengali. Because between a disciple and a guru, language is no barrier. When there is connection of the heart between a true disciple and a genuine spiritual master, language is definitely not a barrier. So even though he came from Manipur and was living in America, he still understood Bengali perfectly. He could understand the heart of Srila Prabhupada. And immediately, 
on the order of Srila Prabhupada, Swarup Damodar Brahmachari called Tamal Krishna Maharaj, who was outside in the garden chanting his rounds. And when Tamal Krishna Maharaj was called to the room, there were only three people in the room Srila Prabhupada, Swarup Damodar Brahmachari, and Tamal Krishna Maharaj. And Prabhupada repeated what he said to Swarup Damodar. He said, Tamal Krishna, Swarup Damodar, Amar Jeevan Shesha Yache, my life is coming to an end. I have to go back to India. So Prabhupada's plan was from England. He wanted to go to Gita Nagari. But somehow Prabhupada changed his plan and he told Tamal Krishna, I want to go back to India. So when this news came out, the disciples around the world were very sad because now Prabhupada had announced his disappearance through Swarup Damodar Brahmachari. So before Prabhupada would, could come to India, Swarup Damodar Brahmachari, in the first flight, he went back to India to prepare for the conference because he now knew that if Prabhupada is in Vrindavan, that means conference can be organized. So immediately in the first flight, he went back to India to arrange for the conference. And in the meantime, Prabhupada, along with Tamal Krishna Maharaj, he came back to India. And when he came back to India, Prabhupada first halted at Bombay because Bombay was the headquarters. It was the administrative head of our ISKCON movement. So he stopped there. And then Prabhupada later, he went to Brindavan to spend his final days. So in the meantime, Swarup Damodar Brahmachari was organizing all the conference. And he recalls that he was doing it all alone. There was no one to help him. Because of Prabhupada's help, many of his disciples were serving Prabhupada. And every disciple was assigned a different seva by Srila Prabhupada. So, Swarup Damodar Brahmachari all alone was running. He was living in Vrindavan, was running to Agra, to Delhi, to get many scholars, to get many scientists for the conference. All single-handedly, with no help. With no one to help him, he was doing it all alone. And at that point, one day Srila Prabhupada, he called Kirtanananda Maharaj and Bhavananda Maharaj. He called both of them and he said, Dear Kirtananda Maharaj and Bhavananda Maharaj, Swarup Damodar Brahmachari is doing a conference on the 14th, 15th and 16th of October 1977. And it is my order, it is my instruction that all the scientists who come, all the scholars who come, they should be given first class prasad. Because Mahaprasade, Govinde, Nama, Brahmane, Vaishnavi, Swalpa, Punya, Vatam, Rajan, Vishwasa, Naiva, Jayate, Sharira, Avidya, Jal, Jada, Indriya, Tahe, Kal, Jive, Fele, Vishaya, Sagre, Tara, Madhya, Jivati. These senses are a network of ignorance. And the topmost of them is the tongue. Tara Madhya Jivati. The tongue is the topmost. But when the prasad of the Lord touches the tongue, everyone gets completely purified. Irrespective of whether they are a scientist or they are a general populace. Whoever comes in contact with the prasad, they become completely purified. So Prabhupada called Kirtanananda Maharaj and Bhavananda Maharaj and said that Swarup Damodar is organizing the conference. He is calling all the scholars. But both of you all, have to manage the prasad. Make sure that all the scientists who come have first class prasad. So he was given help. Swarup Damodar Brahmachari was given help in the form of Kirtananda Maharaj and Bhavananda Maharaj for prasad. But all the remaining planning and organizing, all the other responsibilities were done single handedly by Swarup Damodar Brahmachari. And finally, the day of the conference arrived, the 14th of October, 1977. And Prabhupada was so weak that he could not walk. Even though Prabhupada desired to see the conference, he could not walk. He was very weak. So he told Swarup Damodar Brahmachari, My dear Swarup Damodar Brahmachari, here is my murti. Prabhupada gave his murti to Swarup Damodar and he said, This is my murti. Offer a garland to this murti. It is the same as I being physically present. So Prabhupada made a very significant point that wherever his murtis are present, Srila Prabhupada is actually present at that place. So in various ISKCON temples, we have murtis of Srila Prabhupada. And this was a confirmation. He let the world know through Swarup Damodar Brahmachari that wherever his murtis are there in the world, Prabhupada is actually present. 
So Prabhupada gave this murti and as Prabhupada instructed Swarup Dhammadar Brahmachari garlanded that murti and Prabhupada's presence was felt in the three-day conference. And at the end of the three-day conference, when Swarup Dhammadar Brahmachari came to Prabhupada and Prabhupada asked him, my dear Swarup Dhammadar, what do you think about the conference? And Swarup Dhammadar, in a genuine, humble way, he told Prabhupada that, Prabhupada, I'm not very happy with the conference. I'm not very happy as to how it unfolded. And the reason Swarup Dhammadar Brahmachari said that is he had invited about 100 scholars, but of which only 60 to 70 scholars had come. So for that reason, he was not very happy with the conference. So when Prabhupada heard this, he said, no, the conference was a big success. Swarup Dhammadar, I'm very happy with you. The conference was a big success. And at the end of three days, he told Swarup Damodar and he placed the seed of the first instruction. He said, Swarup Damodar, we should have conferences this way around the world. In every city of this world, we should have conferences. This was the first in instruction that Prabhupada gave Swarup Damodar Brahmachari at the end of the 1977 three-day conference. Later, as we know, November 14, 1977, Prabhupada departed this world. But during the final days of Prabhupada, there were five servants who were taking care of Srila Prabhupada 24-7. So, Bhakti Charu Maharaj, as we know, was one of them. Tamal Krishna Maharaj was one of them. Bhavananda Maharaj was one of them. And Swarup Damodar Brahmachari was one among them. So, Swarup Damodar Brahmachari was taking care of Prabhupada during his last days from 9 o'clock at night to 2 a.m. in the morning. Making sure that if Prabhupada needs a blanket, there is a blanket. If Prabhupada had to change sides, Swarup Damodar was there near him. Just like when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was at Gambira during his final days, it was Swarup Damodar Goswami who was there with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because it was only Swarup Damodar Goswami who could understand the heart of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Similarly, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Senapati Bhakta came down in the form of Srila Prabhupada, it was Swarup Damodar Brahmachari who was taking care of him in his final days. And every day at night, 12 o'clock, Prabhupada would have this habit. He would open his eyes at 12 a.m. at night and he would speak to Swarup Damodar Brahmachari in Bengali. And what would he speak? Prabhupada in 1977, October time, would speak to Swarup Damodar Brahmachari about the Venice Beach talks that they had in 1973. It is so fascinating. Prabhupada at the age of 80 and 81 could exactly remember what he discussed with Swarup Damodar Brahmachari five years back almost. He would remember that, oh, I said this and to that Swarup Damodar replied. Prabhupada would exactly remember the conversation that they had. And every day at night, about 12 o'clock, they would discuss and Prabhupada would instruct Swarup Damodar Brahmachari as to how he can preach to the scientific community. So in one of the instances, Prabhupada, he called Swarup Damodar Brahmachari. And this is the last 10 minutes of our discussion, dear devotees. And this is so fascinating and so interesting. Prabhupada called Swarup Damodar Brahmachari and said, Swarup Damodar, are you convinced of this philosophy of Krishna consciousness? Are you convinced that God is actually a person? Are you convinced of his personal feature? So this was not only a question, but also an instruction, my dear devotees. Because Prabhupada knew that if Swarup Damodar Brahmachari is completely convinced, then he can transform the whole world. He can preach to the whole scientific community. He can break the teeth of all the scientists. So Prabhupada just wanted an assurance and he asked Swarup Damodar, my dear Swarup Damodar, are you convinced of this philosophy of Krishna consciousness? Are you convinced that God has a personal form? And Swarup Damodar Ramachari said, yes, Prabhupada, by your blessings, I am convinced of this message. So till now, to reiterate, dear devotees, Prabhupada has given already two instructions to Swarup Damodar Ramachari. The first instruction was to have conferences around the world. And the second instruction, which was also a question, was whether he was convinced of this philosophy of Krishna consciousness and whether 
he understood that god had a personal form personal feature in one of the talks in 1975 when prabhupad was speaking prabhupad also made this point that just like swarup damodar is doing his preaching in the scientific community to the colleges and universities i want a kirtan party to assist swarup damodar so that along with his preaching there can be kirtan of the hari krishna maha mantra and at that time the only party that was very famous was the radha damodar bus party of vishnu jan maharaj so when vishnu jan maharaj heard this he came to swarup damodar brahmachari and said i will help you swarup damodar if this is prabhupad's instruction and if this is what prabhupad wants i will help you i will do the kirtan and you can speak to the scientific community but sadly as we know in 1976 vishnu jan maharaj left this world and in 1977 shila prabhupad on the 14th of november also left this world but before leaving he gave three powerful instructions to swarup damodar first was to have conferences in all the cities of the world second was to have a traveling kirtan band that can help in his preaching and the third whether he was convinced of the krishna conscious philosophy whether he was convinced that god had a personal form 1977 when prabhupad left this world 3 years later in 1980 swarup damodar brahmachari accepted sanyas so from that day on maharaj was given the name bhakti swarup damodar swami maharaj his only name is bhakti swarup damodar swami maharaj ki jai also fondly remembered by many of the associates as shila shripad maharaj maharaj many times would be addressed as shila shripad so 1980 maharaj took sanyas and two years later 1982 he became an initiating spiritual master in our brahma madhva gaudiya sampradaya in 1989 that is 12 years after prabhupada's departure bhakti swarup damodar goswami maharaj started fulfilling the instructions that prabhupada gave to him one of the instruction was prabhupada instructed him to have a traveling kirtan when he preached and for that reason bhakti swarup damodar maharaj he organized a troop called as the rangniketan this ranganiketan would travel around with bhakti swarup damodar maharaj and all the members of this band were expert singers expert dancers they were good at sword fighting they were good at martial arts and every time bhakti swarup damodar maharaj would present in a conference the last day would be the performance of ranganiketan for almost an hours time there would be nice sword fighting and martial arts and singing and dancing and manipuri drummers who would be flipping with the drums so this was an instruction that prabhupad had gave him and maharaj through the mediums of ranganiket and their dance troupe he inspired the whole world in this cult of bhakti and the best part dear devotees is this ranganiketan would end with the pastime of radha and krishna maharaj would end this pastime the with krishna's pastimes in brajadham in brindavan so this is the heart of a brajavasi dear devotees when krishna was going to the forest yadi duram gata krishna vana shobikshana ayatam aham purvam aham purvam iti samsprishyare mire when krishna was going to the forest to look at the beauty of the forest the sakhas who were there with krishna they had this feeling that they would run behind krishna there is this beautiful photo where krishna and balaram are running and all the cows and calves and all the friends are running behind and shukadev goswami says the mood was the friends were competing spiritually amongst themselves that i will touch krishna but when i am touching krishna i will inspire you also to touch krishna not the case that i will touch krishna but you shouldn't touch krishna but the heart of the brajavasi is i will touch krishna i will be with krishna but in my endeavor i will also inspire you aham purvam aham purvam iti samsprishare mire i first but in the meantime i will also inspire you this is the heart of a brajavasi and this was the heart of bhakti swarup damodar maharaj 
he was giving the pastimes of radha and krishna through the mediums of ranganiketan to people who had no qualification to people who were meat eaters and mlechas they were given this pastime of radha and krishna because the heart of a brajabasi is he gives out this beautiful pastime to everyone without any discrimination so maharaj was a genuine brajabasi and through the medium of ranganiketan he fulfilled the instruction that propat gave him maharaj was also the founder of united religions initiative he was also the founder of the university of bhagavata culture which was a university which is still a university in manipur which emphasizes on teaching the young generation the principles of shastra and how a synthesis can be brought between science and spirituality so in this way maharaj fulfilled multiple instructions of prabhupad he wrote many books he authored many books throughout his life maharaj was the editor in chief of the journal of the bhakti vedanta institute which is called as savignanam just like in iskon we have the back to garden magazine which is the journal you could say for the iskon movement similarly for the bhakti vedanta institute maharaj published a journal he was the editor in chief of that called as savignanam and he would time and again come out with these editions that would help the world understand or bring about a synthesis between science and spirituality and the most interesting part my dear devotees is in the endeavor of writing books in 2006 maharaj fulfilled one more instruction that propad gave him because propad had asked him a question that whether he was convinced of the philosophy whether he was convinced that god is a person in 2006 my dear devotees in one of maharaj's last books he wrote a complete book and gave the topic of the book as god is a person now this was an instruction a question that propad had asked him in 1977 and as a faithful disciple to his spiritual master he wrote a complete book showing to the world demonstrating through science that how god is actually a person and kicking out mayavad completely so in this way maharaj fulfilled the second instruction that shila prabhupad gave him and also throughout his life maharaj held many conferences in many major cities around the world and one of the last conference international conference was in rome in italy in the vatican city so that was the third instruction that prabhupad gave him and bhakti swarup damodar maharaj fulfilled all the instructions through the medium of conference through the medium of books and through the medium of a dance troupe that is ranganiketan moving ahead dear devotees in the year of 2006 prabhupad had also instructed bhakti swarup damodar maharaj to come up and bhakti swarup damodar maharaj in 2006 he also came up with a temple in manipur which is called as krishna mani mandir radha krishna mani mandir the presiding deity is a radha krishna chandra when bhakti swarup damodar maharaj saw the radharani he said this is exactly how radharani looks in the spiritual world bhakti swarup damodar maharaj made this point he said this is exactly how radharani looks in the spiritual world but sadly what happened was when the janmashtami festival was going on in the temple in 2006 on the 16th of august 2006 few attackers they came to the temple and they tossed a grenade they hurled a grenade into the main center of the temple and as we know the grenade exploded there were thousands of people in the temple and the grenade just exploded and there were multiple people who were injured there were multiple people who died there were young children who had come to take darshan of the supreme lord everyone died and in that blast in the manipur in 2006 on the day of janmashtami bhakti swarup damodar maharaj also got brutally injured maharaj's left forearm was completely fractured but even amidst the pain after taking preliminary treatment 
Maharaj did the final rites of all the departed souls. This is so inspiring, dear devotees. This is a Brajavasi. Even though Maharaj had so much pain in his hand, he was still helping out all the families. He was still doing out the final rites, the Shraddha ceremony for all the departed souls. And when all of that was done, on the 25th of August, 2006, Maharaj decided to fly to Calcutta because Maharaj had a Bhaktivanta Institute in Calcutta, which is still present. So he decided to fly to Calcutta. And when he reached Calcutta, he was immediately straight away admitted to the Apollo Hospital. And after being about 14 to 15 days in the Apollo Hospital, Maharaj was discharged on the 9th of September, 2006. Please hear this very carefully, dear devotees. Maharaj was discharged on the September 9th, 2006. And when Maharaj was coming back, there was a complete transformation in the mood. When he came back with the servant, on the way, he told the servant that please search for the Manipuri Raslila Kirtan cassettes. The Manipuri Raslila is also called as the Nata Sankirtan. And this is very bona fide because Bhakti Swarup Damodar Maharaj had asked Prabhupada about the authenticity of the Manipuri Raslila and Prabhupada had given his sanction. So when Bhakti Swarup Damodar Maharaj was discharged from the hospital and was coming home, he told the servant, please find the Manipuri Raslila cassette. I want to hear them. And every day from that day on, Maharaj would hear the cassettes which were in Manipuri and he would be completely absorbed. He would hear them throughout the day. Nityam Bhagavata Sevahe. He was completely absorbed. Only during time when he would have prasad or when he would have medicines or when he would take some rest, Bhakti Swarup Damodar Maharaj would keep the cassette to the side. But apart from that, the whole day he would keep hearing about the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. And when Maharaj would sit down for his lunch, he would explain to his servants, because the servants did not follow Manipuri, Maharaj would explain what the song is all about. He would explain the details as to what this Manipuri Raslila is all about. And Maharaj would give some fascinating points out of his realizations he gave some fascinating points as to how this dance of divinity starts. How this dancing of Radha and Krishna with the gopis of Vrindavan, how does this even start? And Maharaj said, the first step is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is invited into this dancing party to be the witness for this pastime. Jaya Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Dayamai Patita Pavana Jai Jai Mahashai. That Patita Pavan Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is invited as a witness. And my dear Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, please come into this dancing party. So Gauranga Mahaprabhu is besieged to come into the dancing party. And second, the holy name is glorified. The Harinam Sankirtan is glorified. Kriteta Dhyayate Vishnum Tretayam Yajato Makai Dwapare Paricharyayam Kalautad Hari Kirtana. In Kali, no devotional activity ever supersedes the chanting of the holy names of Radha and Krishna. So before this dance of divinity starts, Gauranga Mahaprabhu is asked to come. And then the holy name is spoken about. The glories of the holy name are extolled. And finally, Sri Nityananda Prabhu is asked to come. Prememata Nityananda Kripa Avatar Uttama Adhama Kichu Nakare Bichar Nityananda Prabhu is asked to come. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is there. The holy name is glorified. Nityananda Prabhu is asked to come. And only then does the dancing of Radha and Krishna begin. As we see the Acharyas, they say, Heno nitai vine bhai Radha Krishna paite nai. Without Nityananda Prabhu, no one has ever gotten Radha and Krishna. And no one will ever get Radha and Krishna in the future. It is only through the means of Chaitanya Nityananda can we approach Radha and Krishna. And all this Maharaj was saying out of his realization during the final days. And during those days, he wrote a very beautiful song which I would want to read. It is in Manipuri language. Maharaj wrote, he said, Vraja Premada Lupe 
अंगव बगुमले राधाबु ठिरकले श्री गौरांग के दिनो वृंदावन के दिनो कुंजवन के दिनो लिखी रे सखे ब्रज प्रेम दा लूपे अंगव बगुमले राधाबु ठिरकले श्री गौरांग एंड व्हाट डज इट मीन महाराज काइंडली ही एक्सप्लेन दिस मीनिंग आल्सो इट मींस व्रज प्रेम द लूपे अंगव बगुमले राधाबु ठिरकले श्री गौरांग दैट श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु is searching for shrimati radharani and has become completely mad he has become transcendently mad searching for shrimati radharani this is exactly the mood that even gaur kishor das baba ji maharaj had gaur kishor das baba ji maharaj would wander in the forest and would loudly chant kothai go prema mai radhe radhe kothai go prema mai radhe radhe So Bhakti Swarup Damodar Maharaj, out of his realization, has penned down that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is transcendently mad that he is now searching for Sri Mati Radharani. And what is he asking? Kedino Brindavan, where is Brindavan? Kedino Kunjavan, where are the Kunjas? And Kedino Sakhi, where are the loving Sakhis? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is so absorbed that he is asking, where is Brajadham? where are the kunjas where are the sakhis and in this way chaitanya mahaprabhu is weeping and crying and uttering these words where is shrimati radharani now all this dear devotees was penned down by bhakti swarup damodar maharaj in his last days this is the realization that he was having he was witnessing this past tense of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu and he penned down for the benefit of this whole world So on the first of October, two thousand six, at about eight thirty at night, Maharaj got up and he had little soup as his dinner, and he again went back to rest. The reason he was taking rest is because of the blast; he was kind of injured. So he again went back to rest, and at ten thirty at night, he got up, and there was an office that was connected. There was a room that was connected to Maharaj's room. in the bhakti vedanta institute calcutta he called his servant and he said my dear servant please come and he asked him what is the time so the servant said maharaj is 10:35 at night and maharaj said the finger the left hand fingers are burning for me because of the blast can you kindly apply some ice and the servant agreed and the servant was applying ice and in the meantime maharaj had some pain in the left shoulder also so another servant was called and he was massaging the um, shoulder of maharaj so there was one servant who was putting some ice to maharaj's burns in his left hand while there was another servant who was serving his shoulder and then the devotees recall even amidst the pain maharaj was completely joyful he was completely immersed completely dipped in the past times of shri krishna and he made a point he said this world is on one side and that world is on a different side altogether which means if one is absorbed in the pastimes of krishna one will never have this desire of looking in this world maharaj made this point he said this world is on one side that world is on another side altogether so when the doctors were called at night because of maharaj's pain unfortunately what happened was when they were massaging and they were putting ice bhakti swarup damodar maharaj decided to leave this world so 1215 at night on the 2nd of october 2006 which happened to be the day of vijayadashmi the most auspicious occasion when maryada purushottam ramchandra had victory over ravan that was the day bhakti swarup damodar goswami decided to enter into samadhi into the transcendental dancing past times of radha and krishna so the servants who were there they started rubbing maharaj's hand they started rubbing maharaj's feet and one servant who was there he even loudly said no shripad you can't do this shripad you can't leave us but maharaj had already departed he wanted to go back home back to godhead krishna and radharani were eagerly inviting him and he agreed to their call and maras left this world on the 2nd of october 2006 on the day of vijayadashmi 
So we see he appeared on the day of Odan Shashti, which is very dear to Jagannath, which has a very important significance in the pages of the Chaitanya Charitamrit. And he departed on the day of Vijay Dashmi, which marks the auspiciousness. It was also the day that Ram had victory over Ravan. And anything good that we do on that day, it is said it never stops. That is also one of the reasons that Shripad Aindra Prabhu started the 24 hour Kirtan on the day of Vijay Dashmi. Because whatever spiritual we do on that day, it never stops. So many devotees around the world, they make it a point to increase their chanting on the day of Vijay Dashmi. So that from that day on, they can always keep chanting more uh, Nam Japa. They can remember Krishna's holy names more. But Vijay Dashmi was the day Bhakti Swarup Damodar Goswami Maharaj on the 2nd of October 2006 decided to leave this world. In the Rai Ramananda Samvad, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked Ramananda Rai, Dukha Madhye Kona Dukha Hai Guru Tara Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked Rai Ramananda, My dear Rai Ramananda, Dukha Madhye Kona Dukha of all the sufferings, of all the anxieties, which is the topmost? Which is the topmost pain a living entity can face? Dukha Madhye Kona Dukha Hai Guru Tara at that time, Ramananda Rai replies, Krishna Bhakta Viravina Dukha Nahi Dekhi Para. My dear Lord, I do not know any suffering apart from the separation of pure devotees. The separation from the pure devotees of the Lord are the biggest suffering, are the biggest anxiety. Remaining everything else can be handled, but when we are separated from the devotees of the Lord, that is the biggest form of misery. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu agreed to what Ramananda Rai said. Kripa Kori Krishna More Diya Chile Sangha Swatantra Krishna Ra Icha Kaila Sangha Bhanga Kripa Kori Krishna More Diya Chile Sangha By Krishna's mercy, we got the association of Bhakti Swarup Damodar Maharaj. And Swatantra Krishna Ra Icha Kaila Sangha Bhanga But now Krishna's desire, He has made this Sangha Bhanga. He has made us bereft of Bhakti Swarup Damodar Maharaj's association. Through Krishna's mercy, we got his association in our lives. But now, Krishna being Swatantra, being completely independent, he has made all the disciples and followers completely bereft of the association of Bhakti Swarov Damodar Goswami. Icha matra kaila nija prana nishkraman purvayena shuni ache bhishme ramaran Icha matra kaila nija prana nishkraman Just like just like Bhishma Dev had Icha Mrityu, Bhishma Dev could leave this world when he desired. Similarly, Haridas Thakur left this world when he decided. Similarly, Bhakti Swarup Damodar Goswami Maharaj decided to leave on his own terms, on his own accord. Icha Matra Kaila, he desired to be with Radha and Krishna, and Krishna embraced his loving call. Just like Bhishma Dev, just like Haridas Thakur, even Bhakti Swarup Damodar Goswami Maharaj left this world on his own accord. Haridas Achila Prithibira Shiromani Tahavina Ratna Shunya Haila Medhini. Kaviraj Goswami, when he is describing Haridas Thakur, he says, Haridas Achila Prithibira Shiromani. That Haridas Thakur. Is Prithivira Shiromani, is the crest jewel of this whole world. And in our case, it should be Swarup Damodar Achila Prithivira Shiromani. Bhakti Swarup Damodar Maharaj was the crest jewel among Prabhupada disciples. He was the crest jewel in this world. Prithivira Shiromani, Tahavina Ratna Shunya Haila Medini. But now, this world is bereft of this jewel. The world is now bereft of this jewel. Everyone has become beggars because no one now has the association of Shripad Bhakti Suru Damodar Goswami Maharaj. So in this way, the pure devotees of the Lord, they appear and disappear on their own accord. And the only purpose that they descend is to spread Braja Prem, is to spread the teachings of Sri Chaitanya, is to assist their spiritual master in helping Expand this moment of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu.
and Bhakti Swarup Damodara Goswami Maharaj was one of the very dear associates of not only Prabhupada but also Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who left this world on the 2nd of October 2006 on the day of Vijay Dashmi. On the 4th October 2006, Maharaj was given this holy samadhi on the disappearance of the three Goswamis, Raghunath Das Goswami, who is our Prayojan Acharya, Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, and Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. On the day of their disappearance, Bhakti Swarup Damodara Goswami Maharaj was given Samadhi. And where was he given Samadhi? He was given Samadhi right opposite Radha Kund. Even now, when devotees go on Parikrama, Radha Kund Parikrama, just opposite Radha Kund is the Gopalji temple, which is also Bhakti Swarup Damodara Maharaj's. And behind the Gopalji temple is the Samadhi of Maharaj, which was done on the auspicious disappearance day of Raghunath Das Goswami, Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, and Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. So in this way, when Maharaj was present in this world, he inspired devotees around the world to preach the cult of Krishna consciousness through scientific terms that Prabhupada personally instructed him. And now, in his unmanifest pastimes, in his Aprakat Leela, Maharaj has brought all the followers and all the disciples around the world to his lotus feet at the holy abode of Radha Kund. In this way, we humbly pray to Bhakti Swarup Damodaram Goswami Maharaj to shower his mercy and to give us a drop of the ocean of Krishna Prem that he had so that one day we can also serve our spiritual masters and hope to go back home, back to Godhead, only to serve Radha and Krishna under his lotus feet. Srila Bhakti Swarup Damodar Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.